Hello, this is Steve from SDR Play. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to monitor multiple bands at once using SDR Uno. Now, one way to look at a couple of bands at the time is just to use the band buttons that are provided in the uh, VRX control windows. It's a quick and easy way to do it. Um, there are some disadvantages. If you have a pan adapter set up, you may not want to switch your rig back and forth between bands. And of course, it's not a true simultaneous view. But anyway, let me just uh, illustrate that one for you. So here we are uh, using Uno. I've actually uh, muted the signal. I'll turn it on. Not much going on at 40 meters. Uh, I selected 40 meters using the band select button in the VRX control here. If I want to have a quick look at 20 meters, I just click on 20 and we can see what's going on over in 20 meters. Looks like there's a little bit of activity going on, which is nice. Yeah, someone's doing some transmitting there. I'm going to mute this anyway uh, so that you can hear me speaking. So you can switch around between the bands fairly quickly and easily using the band select buttons. And uh, one convenience feature when you do it this way is the sample rate and decimation values will be set automatically so that you are uh, zoomed in on the entire band and no more. So for example, we're at a sample rate of 2 megahertz, decimation of 32. If we go to 40 meter band, we see it's, the sample rate has now changed to 2.64 megahertz with a decimation of 8. So that's, that's all good and nice for uh, scanning around the bands fairly quickly and easily. Uh, if we want to synchronize any one of these bands with our rig, we have the uh, rig sync us in one button in, in uh, the VRX control window. Just by selecting that, that will be us. That will cause that VRX to be assigned to rig control, assuming you have it set up via OmniRig. So, getting back to the presentation, um, another way to do this is to use multiple VRXs, and that's really the main feature I wanted to show you today. And uh, the advantage of doing it this way is you can dedicate one VRX to your rig and uh, meanwhile you can use the other VRX and monitor what's going on on the other bands uh, without moving your rig around. And it's a true simultaneous view. So uh, the downside to this is, if you're averse to it, some maths is required to figure out what's going on. As you may know already, um, the RSP family of uh, radios are capable of sim simultaneously uh, monitoring chunks of the RF spectrum up to 10 megahertz wide. So if you want to monitor multiple bands, both of the bands of interest must fall within that same sample chunk of spectrum. So for example, if we wanted to monitor 40 meters and 20 meters, 40 meters extends from 7 to 7.3 megahertz and 20 meters extends from 14 to 14.3. So what we need to do in this case is monitor the spectrum all the way from 7 megahertz to 14.3 megahertz, and that's a width of 7.3 megahertz. So that dictates right away that we need to use a sample rate in excess of 7.3 megahertz, e.g. Uh, 8 megahertz, 9 megahertz, 10 megahertz. Now when we're setting it up, as I will illustrate, we must uh, lock our local oscillator to some value midway through that range. And just as an example here, let's say we set the local oscillator to 10.5 megahertz. Our sample range will now be 10.5 plus or minus half of the sample rate. So 10.5 plus or minus 4 megahertz says we can cover from 6.5 to 14.5 megahertz. So let's try it. And now at the moment, uh, what we're looking at here is the uh, default workspace setting that comes with SDR Uno. There's a lot of windows open up and uh, this isn't exactly the best way to illustrate what I want so I'm just going to go to a different workspace, uh, one of the unused ones, workspace 2, which is basically empty. So the first thing I want to do is I want to bring up a control window for the first receiver and being the first receiver it's labeled 00, zero. and uh, the main spectrum for that would be good. So we'll bring up the main spectrum there's nothing to stop you setting up auxiliary spectrum windows as well if you have enough real estate or or maybe you have multiple monitors set up, uh, I don't know. So uh, here's a, the main spectrum window for this first VRX also labeled 00. Now we're going to need a second VRX so we can go to the add VRX button you see it right there. We click on that, a second VRX appears. 
we want to enable it so we'll click on the red square to make it go green we'll bring up an RX control for that and being our second VRX it's now labeled 01 and we need a spectrum for it so we'll click on SP1 and this will create a second spectrum window and there we have it so one thing we might want to do at this point uh, since we've gone to the trouble of setting this up is to actually save the workspace so what we can do is uh, we can do control W on the keyboard and we pick an unused workspace you'll see I've already done one so I'm gonna use workspace 2 this time and it's been saved and now I can right click on the workspace name and call this test or any other name I want so now we've actually saved the positions of the windows now at this point I will confess that although the window positions are saved unfortunately in the current version of SDR Uno it does not save all the frequency settings so when you come back to this later if you've gone off and you've been using some different window combinations different frequencies and so forth you will have to set up the frequencies again now this uh, video was being made using the latest version of SDR Uno which is 1.22 and uh, we do have plans to change the way the whole local oscillator thing works in a future version but for now this is the way to, to get it done so first off we want to set our local oscillator frequency now since we just started up SDR Uno the tune frequency and the local oscillator frequency are the same so we can just left click on the uh, VRX control window and I'm gonna put in what 10.9 megahertz or something 10.9 M and return it and now we see we have a LO frequency of 10.9 megahertz um, we if, if you recall we decided we needed a sample rate of 8 megahertz so we'll try 8 and the decimation of 1 is automatically selected our IF bandwidth is 8 megahertz which uh, means that we are able to get the full 8 megahertz of view so let's uh, let's click on play at this point and uh, I've got this thing muted and uh, here we can see the, the spectrum we're looking at it, it runs from about what that's 7.1 um, uh, up to 14.5 or so now when you see the spectrum tailing off like this that's normally an indication with my antenna set up that I've probably got a little bit too much gain going on so I'm gonna crank the gain down a little bit and it should flatten out the response quite nicely so here's the first problem the um, 40 meter band runs from 7 to 7.3 and you can see that it's kind of fallen off quite uh, sharply at the low end there uh, we're good at the high end from 14 to 14.3 so what this really suggests is because of the the fall off at each end of the spectrum we should probably try an even higher sample rate so I'm going to select this to be 9 megahertz and now let's have a look and now we can see that 7 to 7.3 looks reasonably flat and we can actually go in excess of the 14 to 14.3 in fact I might even decrement the uh, LO frequency a little bit so I, I'll go over the uh, hundreds of kilohertz digit and I'll uh, move it down a little bit um, now we can see that uh, we're reasonably flat from 7 to 7.3 and we're also reasonably flat from 14 to 14.3 so let's say we're happy with this value and at this point we'll click on the LO lock button and uh, you'll see both our VRX's uh, show the same local oscillator frequency at this point now what we want to do is we want to take this first one and let's say we want to make this the 40 meter band so what we need to do is we need to click somewhere in the in within the the band of interest so let's say somewhere in there 7.157 will work and now what we'd like to do is zoom in to get a closer view of the 40 meter band uh, with our sample rate of 9 megahertz the furthest we can zoom in is a span of uh, 562.5 kilohertz and uh, here we can see the entire 40 meter band from 70 or oh, from 7 megahertz sorry up to 7.3 uh, we also notice there's not a whole lot going on at that band right now I'm not even sure if that's a real signal of course uh, we need to make sure we're set to LSB and uh, with a suitable uh, bandwidth okay now we can go down to um, the second VRX and you'll notice our LO is still set to 
So now we want to set something uh, on the second VRX in the range from 14 to 14.3. So again, we will click to pick a frequency in that range, 14.1295 uh, or whatever that's worth. And, and again, we can zoom in and uh, I need to drag this window up just a little bit so I can see the zoom buttons. And we can zoom in on that. And as we zoom in, we will find that the um, the VFO will move to the center of the displayed window. So here's 14.0, here's 14.3. So again, we have the entire 20 meter band visible. Now, one thing I should point out here is there's also some excess at each end. And that's because the maximum zoom only gets us into 562 kilohertz. And that's where the band select features come in useful. But unfortunately, we can't use them here because if we select either 40 meters or 20 meters or whatever, uh, it will reset the sample rate and the decimation, as I showed in the earlier example, to optimize it for just one band. And we want to watch two bands. OK, so. Um, now that we've got, uh, we're zoomed in, you'll notice that the strange quirk of the software here, the, the upper scale has changed, but uh, we really wanted to look at 7.2 megahertz and now our scale's running in the 10 megahertz range. We can just click on the VFO button here and that will bring the 7.2 into, into the middle of the window. Now, um, now we're zoomed in, one thing we might wanna do is increase the gain. Unfortunately, I do not have a very good s antenna set up here. I'm gonna crank it up a little bit and, and hopefully a signal or two may burst through but uh, I'm not holding my breath and as you can see it's still looking pretty dead. Once we've done that for each uh, spectrum window what we might want to do is adjust the spectrum base, move it down towards the bottom of the display for example and the spectrum range to amplify the any signals that may pop up while we're doing this. Uh, if we go back, we can do the same thing on the uh, Spectrum 2. Uh, it's, it's already cranked up pretty good, actually, but uh, I'll increase it a little bit. And uh, when I was running this before I started making the recording, there was some activity going on, on 20 meters at least, and there's not a whole lot going on there right now, which is unfortunate. But I hope you get the, the general idea. So now what we're looking at is we're looking at 40 meters, in the top window controlled by the first VRX and we're looking at 20 meters in the lower part of the screen. Now at this point um, I mentioned uh, OmniRig and uh, pan adapters. Well you see that we've got VRX1 uh, assigned OmniRig control using the RSIN1 button. So we could be working the, uh, the uh, 40 meter band on our rig and um, we could go and we can tune freely on the 20 meter band down here without adjusting our rig because this uh, RX control is completely independent. Now, if we suddenly found a signal of interest down here, and uh, I probably should have muted this signal, it may be breaking through on the audio. Uh, and uh, what we can do is for, for each of these, we could, uh, if we wanted to, we can open up the uh, secondary uh, spectrum window if we wanted to look in more detail at a particular signal, uh, we can unmute it and listen to it over the PC speakers. And then if we decide, hey, yeah, we really want to go and see what's going on here. Um, in fact, there's a signal coming through right now. Let's see if we can unmute that and hear anything good. Eh, not a whole lot going on. So if we suddenly decided that we wanted to go and start working uh, 20 meters instead, all we have to do is click syncing up with your rig. And then of course you can always go back and look at 40 meters up here and see if any more activity comes up there. Now just uh, some of you may have uh, been wondering at this point, it's like, well, within that range that we're looking at, could I not also monitor 30 meters? And the answer is yes, of course. Um, I'll just illustrate that. Uh, we can add yet another VRX and uh, I'll enable that one as well. I'll bring up a VRX control and I'll bring that up there. Unfortunately, I don't really have a whole lot of real estate to show this to best effect, but for example, if you wanted to tune uh, somewhere in the 10 megahertz range, which is which is where 30 meters is, uh, you're more than capable of doing that, assuming that your, your PC has, has that much uh, processing power. As you may have noticed, my own, when it's running, 
is uh, we're running out of uh, system. We're running our CPU up in the upper 80s, up into the 90%. So uh, uh, that's about the limit on my particular machine. But if you have a decent new PC, let's say with an i5 processor, four to eight gig of RAM, uh, you probably will have no problem running multiple windows at the same time. So basically that's how to look at uh, two windows at the same time. So before I go, let's review what we did. Firstly, do not use the band buttons. They're set up to specifically frame one particular band and we need to cover multiple bands. So first we set up UNO to have two VRXs. When we start UNO, we set the local oscillator frequency that we want and lock it using the lock button in the main window click on play and we can see the spectrum and we can confirm that the displayed spectrum is pretty flat and covers the bands that we're interested in. So in the first VRX we can now click on a frequency near the center of the band of interest. In the example we chose 7.15 megahertz and then in the second VRX we picked a frequency in the middle of the 20 meter band 14.15 megahertz. We can now visit the spectrum window for each band and use the zoom buttons to zoom in on the frequency of interest. And we can use the RSYN1 button in the VRX to select which VRX is actually synced with our rig if we have a pan adapter. If you see things of interest, you can switch the rig back and forth by using the RSYN button in the appropriate VRX. You probably want to mute the one that's uh, tracking your rig while you're working a particular band and then turn up the level on the other band so that you can have a listen to what's going on there. And uh, if you have the CPU horsepower to do it and enough uh, real estate on your monitors, then you can add in additional bands. We, if In this example, we could have also added the 30 meter band. So basically there's a lot of options there. You can tune any two bands as long as they fall within the 10 megahertz max spectrum width of the RSP. So thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you found it useful. If you need further information, please visit our website at sdrplay.com. Thank you and 73.